It is so intimidating to commit to a project or commit to anything in general for me. You will always have doubts in your head and you always tell yourself every reason to not do something just so you can stay in your comfort zone. We have to push past those words. They're not real. You're capable of far more than your mind will let you believe. I really like the name Yuki, it means snow in Japanese, and someone suggested that when I asked for like name suggestions. You guys gave a lot of good ones. We're gonna drive her for like 20 minutes to my dad's garage and give her a very thorough look. I don't wanna name her yet because she could still be a lemon. My dad is a mechanic, so I'm gonna drive over to his place. I got insurance um, this morning. There are some, some things, some little things that need fixed before inspection. The horn, one of the blinkers is out. The exhaust needs a little pot patch under there. It's stressing me out because the, obviously there's a lot of doubts of when you get a used car, especially this one this old and especially this one with this many miles. And I know there's so much potential for this to be a huge failure. This is the unknown of getting a really cheap used high mileage vehicle. There's a saying that I learned in summer camp a long time ago is little by little, inch by inch. By the yard it's hard, but the inch, what a cinch. Don't stare up the steps, just step up the steps. Little by little, inch by inch. And I tell it to all my friends and stuff because it's really helped me just think about that, like little by little. Like just take the moment at hand. So get all this stuff situated so we can start on the camper build. So I always drive with my knees really close up to the steering wheel. Just wanna listen to her. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just my driver right now, so it's okay. the horn thing. I think it's something in the steering. Yeah, yeah. I think. What's the chances of both horns going bad, you know? Yeah. Like it doesn't feel like there's anything in there. Can I touch these metal things? Yeah, they're just running. All right, so my dad is driving her over. So the people that commented about how rusty this is, this is, there's no hole in it. It's just out of rust. So as you see, that's a little rusty, but it's the underside. So you see right here. Yeah, see that's where they saw it. Yeah, someone tried to saw off the Cadillac converter, yeah? Yeah. And steal it, but they only got partially the yeah, way through. there's only from here to here, they can get all the way through. So that's, so that needs welded. Yes, yeah, so it definitely needs welded. Yeah. And then, so there's a clamp. It needs a clamp on both, but it needs a clamp back here. But the exhaust isn't too bad. So right now, we are taking this apart because the back blinker doesn't work. So we're trying to find the blinker issue. He has like spare RVs here. So this is like, a, I'd say 90s and 2000s. And since they make RV stuff quite light and there's probably things that we can take out of this. Got a little stove that we would not fit in there, but let's look at the bathroom. So all this type of stuff is built really lightweight, which is good for these types of conversions. Look at this tiny little chair. 
Let's see, I don't know if there's anything we could actually use in here. And there's this one, there's even older, but I think this one's pretty packed with junk. I know it's safe to go in. Oh, yeah, it smells so bad. I guess these are bullion ball bags, I don't know. I'm like lopsided this way. I don't think there's much we could use. Yeah, you, could, you could use the drawers and stuff. Cause it's like, look at that hole. Tiny little toaster. Oh wow, this is so like 70s. It's toilet paper. This could be useful. Actually, I probably could take that out and use that. Cute. You, know, you have like little curtain rods and stuff you can use. Just lightweight things, you know? Shower, tiny little tub. I don't even think there would be anything in there I'd want to get. Also, we discovered there is actually a horn. It's a tiny little button on the side that they put in in place of the other horn, so we don't have to replace that. Update on what we've done. I didn't film whenever we worked out on it the second day because I just want to focus on getting things fixed. We did, in fact, get things fixed. I'm very happy to have this Jeep. Uh, I had some comments on my last, on my video that were like, oh, you just bought yourself a headache or you just, you made a bad purchase or you don't know what you're doing. Like it's bad, blah, 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 blah. And I'm happy to say that you're wrong. It's all rusted. It's not. Even if I did make a terrible purchase, let me learn from it on my own terms. There's no reason for people to put negative comments. It ruins the vibe. Like, it's not gonna help me at all. It's not helping you. There wasn't a lot of comments like that. I, I, I've been working on this Jeep for the past week with my dad, and for days straight, we could not figure out the blinker problem, and we went through everything. We went through a steering wheel, we went through the back, all the wires, we went through the fuses, uh, the relay, everything, and could not figure out what it was. Um, we replaced the, the turn signal switch up here, which needed to replace anyways, because it wasn't clicking off whenever you make a turn. So it's good that that got fixed. That was $40. And we just put it in ourselves, took it out and put it in ourselves. But whenever I turn the wheel, clicks off. We found the horn right here. That's the horn. I'm not gonna beep it right now, but beep, beep, beep. You have to have a horn for inspection. It doesn't really matter where it is. And finally, at the very end of the night, it was dark by this point, we went back to the, the back blinker again, because it was blinking really fast over here. It was like, da, 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 da. one side was like, da, 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 da. tested out the ground wires. We took the little thing went, to test out the lights. And we finally found in the actual circuit that's hooked up that the bulb goes into, he put the stick thing in there. And one side, it was fine. It was blinking, but the other side of it was not connection like bent and a little corroded so he like pulled it out a little bit it was just a tiny little difference and it made the blinking stop the, it, it started blinking like a normal blinker after that and we're just like Hallelujah. you wouldn't think that electrical work like that would be really expensive at an actual garage if you took it in but that would be really expensive because there's people before us that try to figure out the problem too because everything we did we figured out that they were they checked too because they kind of left a little trail of what they were tracking checking like they took, they left the rubber off the steering wheel thing the wrong way. And then the carpet was pulled up because they took the panel off to look for what was causing this blinker problem. So we finally found that and we won. Like they couldn't figure it out, but me and my dad did. The exhaust is welded. We got that. We took, actually had to take that in to get it welded because my dad didn't have a welder, but we got the two sides welded. So that will pass inspection. Now we put on the clamps that um, they had taken off. Everything is pretty much good to go. And I also got this for driving my phone. I also got this for either my 360 camera or a phone attachment too. I'm gonna add some stuff on my wish list. I wanna get a rack for the top so I can sit up there and also put my tire up there. I had to make some sort of plan for the back. I had to tear everything out and I know it's gonna be a lot of mistakes because, you know, I'm learning. As you can see under here, they welded both sides. The one side, they really cut into it. The other side just need a little patching. So cold. Even in the garage, it just, it's so incredibly cold that my fingers just freeze up. I actually prefer to dress like this. I've always been like a tomboy and I hate uncomfortable clothing. So functional, comfortable clothing is my favorite thing in the world to wear. And I just haven't really because, you know, I always struggle with, just really want to have my feminine side be shown, but I, 
It's so uncomfortable for me and I hate it. I also hate wearing makeup and I haven't been wearing makeup as much either lately. That's the big change. Like when I come home, I don't feel like I have to. When you're in big cities and stuff, you just feel like you have to like look good every day. Good morning. The weather is terrible out. The roads are very bad. So I'm like, this is giving me the opportunity to test my four wheel drive. I don't like driving on these types of roads at all. Before we go, I need to take my vitamins. This one's for the brain. Probiotics. Also, every morning I do oil pulling. You put in some coconut oil, like a tablespoon or something in your mouth and you swish it around for like 10 to 20 minutes. So I do this every morning. And then you spit it out and it's supposed to be really good for your teeth. because of the heater going in here, but right now we are assessing what all we're gonna do and what we're gonna take out. We do need to take the, the seating out, take out the seat belts, the headlining we need to take out as well. So this is the beginning of first we have to gut it and measure. We have to utilize as much space as possible because obviously everything is very small. All right. Also, we need to take these seat belts out. I don't know how you unhook that. Oh. Big star wrench. Yeah. Like these sides we should take out. We leave these on. All right, well, let's get this out first. All right, so that's, <sighs> what size is that? My plan is to put the bed on this side and then have uh, kind of some storage on this side, but also uh, a pull out so we can pull out a, a propane, a little propane stove. Most of this stuff is just like a lot of bolts. So save some weight as well. So in case you wondered, this is what the inside of a seatbelt looks like. It's kind of hard to take off, but this is a seatbelt. You can have it. See, <laughs> I'm paying my dad with things he finds in the bottom of the seat. <laughs> so far you got a quarter and some lemonade. <laughs> so my main goal today was to take out the seats, but um, inspect everything and figure out how we're gonna build this, which I have an idea in my mind now, and take out the headliner, which has been a pain because we have to take out all these things on the sides. It's pretty stuck on there from somewhere. Yay, that was a lot of work. I'll just pull it off gently. Pull it off. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Scheiße. Scheiße. That's a swear word in German, but not in English. All right. Good to go. Okay, go over there and turn your wipers off. Be as warm in here now. There we go. Okay, yeah. So it was just frozen. We need to figure out what we're going to do for the headliner. And the next video, we're going to probably start on building the base and everything. Just kind of start building the actual camping part. Because now we have it all taken apart. We have it all fixed up mechanically. Now we get into the fun creative stuff. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Stay extraterrestrial and I'll see you in the next one.